All right, Shalom. We are the Hebrew Israelites. We come week in and week out to let you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans know who you are according to the Bible, which are the children of Israel. And to let the other nations know that there's no part of uh, in salvation for you. Um, we're also here to uh, talk about the downfall of this kingdom and the upliftment of, you ch of the children of Israel who are promised to get the inheritance of the world in the scriptures. I'm going to start off by giving all praises to you, Yahweh Shai. I praise Yahweh Double honors to our apostles and elders at Great Millstone and a sincere shalom to all the Akim on the four corners of the earth preaching this word and the believers who are preaching it and believing in sincerity and truth. All right, uh, we're going to start off and just go into the, uh, the judgment, man. And why why the judgment is happening and what's gonna what the reason for the judgment and the things that are gonna take place in these next days, in these last days. You go ahead, huh? Isaiah 5 and 20. Warn to them that call evil for good and good and evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Con. Woe to them that call evil good. Good is the scriptures. Good is the law of the Most High. Evil is everything outside of that. And this place, is, as well as all other places around the world, are teaching that God's laws are null and void. That the wisdom that is in the law is no longer wisdom anymore. That breaking the, law, the, God, uh, the Most High's laws is now good. And it says, woe to them. Woe is destruction. Meaning that if you step outside of this law, you're going to move the Most High to wrath. And when the Most High judges people, he doesn't judge single individuals, he judges nations. The reason Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are oppressed is because they left the way of understanding. You can jump down to uh, 23 on that one. Oh, yeah. Verse 23, which justified the wicked for reward. Khan. Cons, lock it. Justifying the wicked for reward. What's that? That's justifying the, the oppression and the genocide that happened for this place to be established and on smaller scales raising up and glorifying people in this nation that are uh, openly wicked. You got our people who went from the temptations and singing about love and being connected to your, uh, your family to now they're promoting adultery and drug use. And you know what this world does? They give them, they, they dignify them. Folly is set in great dignity in this place. So when you sin, you're glorified and you're rewarded for it. Well, the Most High has a reward for that. You can continue, huh? It says that justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Con, and justifying the wicked for a reward. That's a lot of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans uh, kissing the uh, the other nation's ass for a reward, for some treats. In order for you to be successful, you have to uh, play along in the game. You got to change how you are as a as a man, as a so-called black man or so-called Latino man. You got to change your ways for the heathens, for a reward from the heathens, man. The Most High told us that we sold ourselves for naught. To be like these heathens, and these heathens don't regard us right now. You can change on. Can I say? Can I say? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Like uh, I was watching this documentary. It was about Hiroshima. It's on Netflix. A new documentary they put up. It's called the uh, the truth about Hiroshima or something like that. And when they uh, when you look at it, right? The Japanese is about to, to surrender, man. But they had just created this atomic bomb. And they want to use it in front of all their enemies. So that everybody could see what they got. So they went ahead and used that on the Japanese, even though the Japanese, through the Russians, was trying to um, broker a peace treaty. And then they made up an excuse about, oh, we had to use it to save 100,000 US lives and all this shit like that. So then now, it's like, they say to justify the wicked for reward. So now you got men that go to the military and they go to the military for the sole purposes of talking about protecting America and you know, we, you know, they families did it for so many generations. 
getting that reward to go out throughout the world and do wickedness. Because all they're doing in these other countries is killing the people, man. They're killing, killing um, what they call civilians. All right, civilians. They're not fighting no wars. They're killing civilians. That's what they're doing. As a matter of fact, when you watch the documentary, right? Shit so cold, so, they so wicked. They said they chose, they originally chose this other city. And it was, it was like an ancient city in Japan, like an ancient um, religious city. And the people were smart and shit and cultured and shit like that. And they were gonna drop it there because of that reason. But they chose Hiroshima and Nagasaki because they were cities that the houses were built with paper and wood, man. And they knew it would burn up, burn the fuck out the place. And then it was no bases there. It was no military bases there, man. They didn't drop that, they didn't drop those bombs on any, any military base. They dropped it there because they knew it was a bunch of civilian, man. So they dropped the A-bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki for that reason. But you still got our people that'll go join the military and say that this is the greatest country on earth and we gotta protect our, our civil rights and our freedoms. Nope, we gotta go over there to Syria and we gotta kill that motherfucker in Syria because he just he just uh, put some mustard gas or whatever gas he used on his own people. But right here in Flint, Michigan, they poisoning um they poisoning their own uh they own citizens. Some straight hypocrisy. But you're gonna go fight for that shit. You're gonna go fight. I'm gonna make this show. But you're gonna go over there. When 9 11 happened, right? You had a lot of niggas like, yo, the terrorists came. I'm gonna join the military. Ain't nobody finna come to my country do that. I was fucked up. My, my father died, but then, you know that. But then they'll join the military and go do the same shit in another country. Go over there and shoot up, bomb goddamn buildings with drones and then say that. that Oh, Bin Laden did it or some shit like that. You terrorist too, man. But you justify the wicked for reward. So you can get that money. And niggas say, oh, I'm, I'm going because of the money. Or I'm going because they're going to pay for my college. What you got to do for that, though? You got to go and kill some innocent people for them to pay for your college. That's that justifying the wicked for reward, man. But that's it. Fine, fine, fine. Want me to keep reading? And take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Khan, take away the righteousness um, from us. Because the Most High has given us, he's blessed us with this knowledge and eyes to see the truth. And we see righteousness and we're not, uh, we're, we're not, uh, this, this righteousness is not regarded, it's not respected. You take that away from us. To the point where it's so many lies that have been told and pushed and, and continue to push through generations that telling the truth is offensive now. To bring out history that actually happened is, is offensive now. Now you're racist. Your whole, your whole line, your whole lineage, your whole nation got over here uh, through bondage, but you can't say nothing about that or you're racist. You're the problem. That's, take, that's, that's justifying the wicked, man. We can't discuss the, the, the terroristic acts that have been going on through from generation to generation and nobody want to bring it up. One well, of the Most High is raising up men to come out here and say, you wicked, you're the terrorist. And the Most High is going to destroy you and your nation because of your wickedness. God fearing country that don't follow God's laws. How much sense does that make? What, what hope has the hypocrite, man? The most I say that, what hope has the hypocrite? Why would you put the most high's laws in your hand and go out here and do wickedness and still speak on the most high's laws, man? That's wicked, man. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be a destruction for that. All this is, is the nation is trying to do another Tower of Babel, again. Every time the most high, every time we get in trouble, the nations come together and you get folly all over the place but this is the end this is when all nations get paid back for all of that wickedness they've been doing man all the wickedness um i say isaiah uh 34 verse 1 come near ye nations to hear and hearken ye people let the earth hear and all that is therein the world and all things that come forth of it for the indignation of the lord is upon all nations and his fury upon all their armies 
He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. And right now, all the nations are being delivered to the slaughter. And rightfully so. You don't regard the, uh, the, the people in your own country. You go over there and spend 100 million bombing airstrips and you got poisonous water in uh, Flint, Michigan. That's hypocritical. And you know what? Right around here. Destruction is gonna happen to the hypocrites. The Most High is not with you. His indignation is on you. That's righteous hatred. All of this, all of this, uh, this enjoyment of peace that, that this uh, country gets to uh, enjoy is at the cost of millions of lives. But nobody cares about that. Well, I'm telling you today, through the power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, he cares and he's gonna judge you. Since you love blood, blood is gonna follow you. Since you justify all of the wickedness you're doing, the most, of, the most high is gonna be justified in judging you for it. We're not here as a, uh, we're not coming out here to ask our people to start something here. We're coming out here to warn our people that war is coming. If you want to be protected, you need to come back to your heritage. We're not asking you to do nothing but come back to your heritage uh, if, it be, if it be in the spirit of the Most High for you to do so. Because all these heathen are about to be judged for the, all the wickedness they've done. They've walked around proud looking at themselves as, as high esteem for all the wickedness they've committed and they feel like there's no payback. Payback is coming. World War III is being prepared for your payback. This war does not involve you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. If you repent, if you joined up to the heathen, you're going to get chopped down with them. The only people who are going to receive this opportunity of salvation is you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that repent and come back to the Most High. The lie that God is for everybody is a lie, according to the Bible. And we can show you that in the Bible. God has a chosen people. His chosen people are you Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, West Indians, and Haitians. You are all one family. Get your shit together. War is coming. And the Most High is only taking a remnant from this place of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, and he's killing the rest. That's raw truth for you. Go ahead, dog. I got one scripture and I'm going to jump back to where we were there. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 7. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Yasharalah, Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression for righteousness, but behold, a cry. One to them that, jo uh, that join the house to house and lay field to field till there be no place that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. Nah, we're just saying that the most high chosen people is Yasharala or Israel. Negroes, Native Americans, and Hispanics. He looked for judgment. Judgment meaning what? Judgment of the laws. Meaning the execution of our laws. And then the execution of our laws is to love your neighbor, which is your brother and your sister of your nation. A right to love the Most High, to keep the Most High ways. That's the execution of the law. The Most High looked for the execution of the law, those three things. And what did he find? Oppression and cry, sorrow. All right? All right but this is back to where we was. Come, I said, come, come. If I could speak on that a little bit, because what, what Ark's saying is that the Most High designed us to be in the judgment seat, man. We, our people, whether you acknowledge it or not, you're designed to be lords over this world. When, when the one you call Christ said he's the king of kings and lord of lords, he was talking about you, you guys. He was talking about you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. You're all kings and lords under him. That's why he's the king of kings and the lord of lords. We're a nation of lords, man. We don't belong on the bottom, but we're on the bottom because we forgot the laws. The world is being destroyed because we have not come back to our heritage. We broke the laws and we're being punished for it. Bring it up. Genesis chapter 35, verse 10. And God said unto him, Thy name is Jacob. Thy name shall not be called anymore Jacob, but, is, um, but Yasharala, Israel, shall be thy name. And he called his name Yasharala, Israel. 
And God said unto him, I am God Almighty, be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall be of thee, and kings shall come out of thy loins. That's it. Con, we're royalty, man. We are royalty. The reason we're on the bottom right now is because we broke the covenant. We had a contract with the Most High and we broke it. And his promise for us breaking that contract was bondage. To be oppressed and shamed in front of all nations. And that's what's happening now. No matter where you go as a Negro, Latino, or Native American, this world looks down upon you. That's a curse from the Almighty. Because you're set up to be royalty. And in the ancient world, we didn't prefer royalty. We wanted to be like everybody else. But whether you like it or not, the whole world has an ecosystem. Every race, every kind has its purpose on this earth. Our purpose was not to be a servant to these nations. Our purpose was to be lords over these nations and to judge them in righteousness. But the Most High was not going to allow us to be priests if we couldn't keep the law ourselves. So the Most High has given us an opportunity right now in the last days to come back to your nationality, man. You Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you're one family, man. Stop looking down upon each other, man. Really, that's not going to happen until the kingdom come. But if, if you can't receive it, man, come back to your heritage, man. Because destruction is coming, and the Most High is going to get rid of a lot of people, including two-thirds of our own people. If you put Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and West Indians all together, and you try to count that, that multitude, you can't count it. The Most High said we are as the sands of the sea, man. You can't count the sands of the sea. You can't go to a beach and count all that sand. The Most High is getting rid of two thirds of that this time. You'll be back in the kingdom, but on this side, in order to escape this death and destruction, you gotta come back to your heritage if you can receive it. Bring it up, huh? Got two scriptures. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 8 Nay, ye do wrong and defraud and that your brethren know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God Behold, um, be not deceived neither fornicators nor adulterers nor adulterers nor effeminate nor abusers of themselves with mankind nor thieves nor covetous nor drunkards nor revilers nor ex uh, extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God verse 2 do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? And if the world shall be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest of matters? Know ye not that we shall um, that we shall judge angels? How much more the things that pertain to this life? Now let me go to uh, Luke chapter one. Verse uh, 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Yasharala, Israel. For he had visited and redeemed his people, and had prayed and had raised up an horn of salvation for us in the, house of, in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, Con. that we should be saved from our enemies Con. and from the hand of all that hate us. And that's the, uh, Salaki, that's the salvation for you. That's salvation for you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, that we're going to be saved from our enemies. We're not going to have to walk in fear amongst all these other nations, man. The Most High raised up Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Christ, so that we can have this opportunity to be saved from our enemies, man. We gotta wake up, man. At the end of the day, whether you like it or not, these enemies, these nations are our enemies, man. We can have all the compassion we want in the world for them, but they have none for us, man. Who else is out there on them so-called Black Lives Matter marches and stuff? It's you fighting for your own rights to be heard in this, in this place. The Most High is not giving us that. He's going to completely save us from our enemies. We're not going to live amongst our enemies. This is a punishment, man. People talk about uh, not wanting to die and go to hell. You're in hell if you're a Negro, Latino, or Native American. You're in hell. Whether you're rich or poor. If you're a rich Israelite, if you're a rich Negro, Latino, or Native American, you still look at as a rich nigga. If you poor, you still going through hell as well. There's no rest for us here, man. And the Most High is about to take us out of this place. The elect of our nation is being taken out of this place. The ones who can receive this word right now, they're going to be taken out of this place because the Most High is going to destroy all of this. Huh. Verse 
Verse 49, for he that is mighty had done to me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength to his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He put down the mighty from their states and exalted them of low degree. Khan, he put the mighty down. Right now, America and the Western powers, all of the EU, the NATO, all of that is a mighty, a mighty army, a mighty conglomerate if you want a mighty kingdom if you want to say right now the most high is going to do exactly what he did in egypt he's going to do it to this because this isn't built on the most high's laws this is built on genocide and oppression there is a payment for that genocide and oppression just like sally may take out loans and she and she and you got to pay her back you got to pay the most high back for all the blood you shed here Go ahead, huh? It says, He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent em away empty. He hath hoping his servant Israel, Yasharala, in remembrance of his mercy. Skip over to 72. 70. 70. As he spake by the mouth of his prof holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Come all that hate us man it don't matter uh it's not just the uh esau the so-called white man it's all these nations man we're not african the africans don't come to no black lives matter protest man because they know you're not you're not their people man they know that you don't know that the uh moab the so-called chinese they don't they don't regard us in, in our uh cause they don't care about our oppression they worry about their people Ammon in Japan, they worry about their people, man. You're the only people that's not worried about your nation. And that's because the Most High destroyed us and cursed us. Bring it out, huh? To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear and holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our lives and thou child yeah, that's that's it we are designed to serve the most high we're the most high's uh nation chosen nation the elect of our of the world we are designed to push out righteousness on the earth and the most high is not going to just just say that he proved it by putting all these heathens out there's no righteousness going on in this world and that's because the heathens are ruling Esau, whose biblical nationality, uh, who, uh, the so-called white man whose biblical nationality is Esau, is the head over this world. And there's no righteousness being pushed out in this world at all. You can, uh, you can marry another man, but you can't have a second wife. That's unrighteous. That's unrighteous. A man commit a crime and you, and you force him to stay amongst a lot of men for decades. That's unrighteous. Pork, bacon, shrimp, lobster is unrighteous. It destroys your body. So all of these laws, all of these uh, unlawful acts are being pushed out by these heathens. And that's why the world is in the condition it's in. Everything has a purpose. Everything that's, that, that's in the ocean is in food, man. Whether you know it or not, everything that walk on this earth that's not a human, is not food. It's certain things the Most High said not to eat. Pigs eat anything. They have enzymes inside their body that's built to destroy anything. When you put that enzyme inside your body, it destroys shit. That's not wise, that's not wisdom. But this world is not ruled by the wise. Bring it on. Huh? First Peter, if I can say this too. Come, come, boy. The point of all of that is, the children of Yasharala, the reason that you're important and so-called better than the other heathens is because our purpose on this earth is to set, is because we have a connection with the Most High, all right? We're the children of the Most High, so our purpose in this earth is to teach the other nations. That's what makes us better than them, all right? Or important. It's not that we just raw-ass nation because we black, 
because anything else other than the fact that the most high chose us to be the priest to teach everybody on the earth okay that's our purpose but when we lost sight of our purpose and started to want to be like everybody else instead of teaching them that's when we went off and the most high put us in captivity under the people that we're supposed to be teaching so this is a uh, that's why in Luke, what I read, it said he would save us that we may be able to serve him without fear because our service to him is to set the earth in order so that the earth is in righteousness. That's why when we, like the brother said, the earth is being ruled by the wicked. They got all these wicked laws. Men can marry men. <clears throat> they serving you pork. Pork is the cheapest meat out there. Giving it to you all the time because the wicked rule. Hold on real quick. When we rule, the earth is going to be set right and these things won't be so. Because the Most High is going to make us perfect so that we can serve Him perfectly so that we can set the earth in order because the earth is supposed to be in order under the Most High, following the righteous laws so that the earth can be peaceful. Go ahead. Uh, Proverbs chapter 29. Verse 2. Verse 2, yeah, Khan. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Right, so nobody rejoicing right now. Right now you got people in the park that's homeless. But like the brother said, they dropping hundred, what is it, hundred million? Hundred million, they hundred million dollar dollars. bombs over in, fuck, over in fucking Syria. You got a hundred million dollars to spend on a bomb that's gonna explode in a split second, but you can't take care of the homeless. That's the law of the most high that we had in our land. We had to take care of the homeless. But they say this is a Christian nation. They said that they're the, they came throughout the whole earth to bring Christianity, what they call, you know, what they call Christianity. But yet and still, they drop a hundred million dollar bombs over in uh, Syria. It's poor people walking all, all throughout the park. They got the park so nice and pretty, you know, little hedges and shit, but they ain't got no plants. They grow fruit. That's because the righteous is not ruling. But we're going to rule. The earth going to be set in order and none of this shit will be happening. Go ahead. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. So everybody mourning right now. They got this fake ass money. Everything is based off of money. The money ain't real. The money, they're inflating the money every day so that you can suffer. It's a game. It's a game to control you, to have you go out and expend your energy, which is valuable, so that they can make money off you and basically have you in captivity. These heathens in captivity too. So-called white man, he in captivity, he don't know it. His own people, that's why when you go to, uh, I think it's Isaiah chapter 14 or something to that nature, even the, the so-called white man put his own people in captivity. So that's how you know that the wicked is ruling. That's wicked, man. But the most are so raw, he gonna take the bottom nation, the so-called Negroes that nobody give a fuck about. The so-called Hispanics, which they got a little something. And the so-called um, Native Americans, which they damn non-existent. He gonna take the, the littlest nation that nobody give a fuck about that's in the dust, and he gonna raise them up to be the highest nation. That's how raw the most high is. That's how drastic he is. You finished with that? This is uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy, na a holy nation. Holy, the holy men is set apart. It tells you, and Gen and I'm sorry, Deuteronomy, that the Most High set you apart from the other nations. Once again, it's not because it's some special shit about you. You're set apart because the Most High chose you to teach the nations, to be the priest on the earth, to rule the earth. You ain't special, but you Israelites that think you're special, and you're better than the heathens for some, because you can jump high, we play basketball. No, it's only because the Most High chose us. We could have been just like the other nations, but he chose us. That's the only shit that make us special. And we're going to rule the earth in righteousness, meaning that we're going to teach the other nations his laws. That's the only thing. Um, I wasn't done, my bad. A holy nation, a peculiar people, meaning you're different, all right? You're set apart. That ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his um, marvelous light which in time past were not a people, not a people right now, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. So the whole point 
of all of this, us coming out teaching, us going through slavery, us being in this little state, the whole point of this is that the Most High is going to lift you up and make you rule the earth. He's going to, he's using you as a tool to set the earth in order, all right? It's the same as a, as a wrench. It's nothing different from the wrench and the hammer. I mean, there's differences, but it's nothing. They, one is not more important than the other, except for one purpose. If you got to work on a car, you got a little nut, you can't use the hammer to get it out. You got to use a wrench. That's, that's the importance of Israel. That's why we're important, not because no other thing. All right, go ahead, bro. Come, that, that, that's deep. Because at the end of the day, it's not, uh, it's because of, of course, the promise as well, but we are, we are set up and chosen to serve a purpose, man. All of these courthouses with judges sitting in them, Israelites belong in those judgment seats, in righteousness. Right now, we have to learn righteousness. We have to live and breathe oppression in order for the Most High to teach us this great lesson. That it's better to rule in righteousness than it is to be wicked. That's the whole setup. That's the reason all of this is set up. Really, it's for the elect's sake because most of these people don't get what's going on and they won't get it until it's too late. It's for the elect to wake up every day, live and breathe the oppression under wickedness. So that when they sit in the judgment seat, they know how to judge and balance. Both having mercy, but still having judgment. We are designed to sit in courthouses in every city around the world, judging things according to the laws of the scriptures. And there are great things in this in these scriptures, but we have to unlearn what we've learned in, in Babylon. We have not, we've never left captivity, man. We are still in captivity. It's just, it's, it's high-tech captivity now. And it, it comes from a lot of Esau's greed, because now he done put all his people in, in slavery. He done kept the blessing from all of them. So they'll say, it's not about color, it's about, because now you are oppressed. But in the 1950s, it was about color. You wasn't saying that shit back then when we was oppressed, when all you could say was, at least I got my own water fountain, and these niggas gotta drink out of something, something else. So the Most High is not dealing with that, man. The Most High is, is, is bad because he sits above, and when I say bad, I mean awesome. It's because he sits above time, man, and he judges things through a, a dispensation of time. So you do something wicked right now, he not gonna judge you right now. He gonna let you grow in your wickedness, and then when you least expect it, he gonna bring your fears upon you, man. He gonna bring the worst case scenario upon you, and that's what the Most High is doing to deliver his people. So that our people can be judges on the earth, and the earth can go back to its rightful state and order. Where you don't have to go to a supermarket and have to look at ingredients labels and decide if the food is organic or if it's GMO. That's wicked. The Most High made everything in this natural state perfect. Now you got a, a kingdom where the heathens try to artificially make up things that don't exist in the natural world. And it's throwing off the balance. But the Most High is, is awesome because he's showing us this is what wickedness looks like. And this is how well people accept wickedness. But there's a world coming that's meant for you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. Where you're on top. And, and, and the Most High said that that's not going to stop. That's going to be an eternal kingdom. That's a world without end. Sirach so chapter 17, verse 24. I started verse uh, 16. Every man from his youth is given to evil. Neither could they make to themselves fleshly hearts for stone. For in the division of the nations of the whole earth, he set a ruler over every people. But Israel, Yasharala, is the Lord's portion. Whom being his firstborn, he nourished it with discipline. Con, this is discipline. This is discipline. If the Most High didn't care about our people, he wouldn't have did this to us. If the Most High didn't care about our people, he would have let us continue in wickedness and just accept us. But what the Most High did is he gave us discipline. Salaki, he gave us discipline so that we could learn how to be good. So we can learn righteousness, so we can learn how to follow these laws. A good father is good and compassionate, but he also is judged. He also judges when you go off. If not, he's not a good father if he don't beat you when you're doing something wrong. Otherwise, you'll that that'll become a habit. 
And we have stony hearts right now. We have a heart that's catered to wickedness. So this is our discipline right now. And giving him light, giving him the light of his love, do it not um, forsake him. Therefore, all their works are as the sun before him, and his eyes are continually upon their ways. None of their unrighteous deeds are hid from him, but all their sins are before the Lord. But the Lord, being gracious and knowing his workmanship, neither left nor forsook them, but spared them. The arms of, of a man is a signet with him, and he will keep the good deeds of men as the apple of his eye and give repentance to his sons and daughters. Afterwards, he will raise up and reward them and render them, sorry, render their recompense upon their heads. But it's in them that repent. He granted them return and comforted those that fell in patience. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Make thy prayers before his face and offend, le and offend less and offend less. Turn again to the Most High and turn away from iniquity. For he will lead thee out of darkness into the light of health and hate thou abomination vehemently. I mean, hate, hate everything that's outside of this law, man. Hate that, man. Because outside of this law is death, man. And you're seeing that every day. And you're going to see it even more so in these next coming, uh, these next coming years and these last days, man. The Most High is about to prepare this place for blood because they did not stay in these laws, man. They didn't build this place up on, on righteousness. And because of that, he's gonna judge it, man. Let's say this real quick. Huh, huh. Notice it said, turn into the Lord and offend less, all right? It don't mean when you come into the truth, you gonna be perfect, you never gonna break the law. Oh, to the contrary. Especially when you first come in, you're gonna break some laws. You're gonna break the Sabbath. You're gonna break a whole bunch of laws. You're gonna eat pork sometimes by mistake. It says offend less. I right, for the brothers out there that wanna, you know, think another, judge another brother like he supposed to be a house shot, like he supposed to be perfect. You're wrong for that shit, man. The scripture said offend less. It means that to the best of your ability, try not to break the laws, man. Got one more. Sirach chapter five, verse seven. Make notarian to turn to the Lord and put not off from far, sorry, put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Well, what you were saying about uh about when you when you least expect it, then the most high come in and, and judge your ass, man. Come on, man. And that's that's deep what I said because me being new man, I have to I have to sometimes I have to, you know, check my check myself because it's like it's like being a baby, man. When you a baby, you still you you don't know how to walk, you don't articulate your sentences correctly all the time. You don't know how to do none of that. Everything has to start from a certain place. Two, you, you don't you don't expect a two-year-old to go to the first grade, man. He has to develop. You know what I'm saying? And that's a, that's what this truth is about. You've been living your life 20 plus years a certain way, and now you have to erase all of that. But in those 20 years, you've created habits that are contrary to the scriptures. And it takes a it takes a lot of effort to change those habits. But if you continue to pray and be steadfast, the most high will raise you up, man. You gotta come in sincerity, man, and, and really repent and try to bring the, uh, bring yourself into these laws and, and bring yourself in the subject under the Most High's uh, authority, man. Got two scriptures. Uh, Isaiah chapter five, verse twenty-six, and He will lift up an ensign to the nations from far, and He will hiss unto them from the end of the earth. And behold, they shall come with speed swiftly. That ensign is just true. I mean, that ensign, which is a sign. Or like, you know, when, when people go to war, they, yeah, they'll have that yeah. pole with the flag on it, with a symbol. That's what this is. It's the truth. The Most High is lifting up the prophets as an ensign to all the nations. That's why they're about to go to war. They hasten to go to war because the prophets is raised up. 
Everybody know about Yashirala. It's even on Kendrick Lamar mix, um, not mixtape. It's even on his album. You got a guy saying, this is a man that's famous, man. And everybody bought that album. And on the, on the, la the last track, the man says, the so-called Negroes are the children of Israel. We're cursed according to Deuteronomy chapter 28. So now everybody throughout the whole earth is hearing that, that, that album. Not to mention, we've been pushing this for years. It's been going on since the early 1900s. We're in the internet age now. So this is the end sign, it's true. This is uh, going back to what you were saying about being a babe. This is wisdom, of, I'm sorry, uh, yeah, wisdom of Sirach, chapter two. My son, if thou, if thou come to serve the Lord, prepare thy soul for temptation. Set thy heart aright and constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. Meaning that, like the brother said, when you first come in, you gotta set your heart, your mind, to know that you're gonna, you're gonna have to endure some hardness, man. You're gonna break the laws, you're gonna get mad with yourself. You might even think the most high mad with you. You're gonna go through that shit. You might think you might even wonder if you're a heathen or not. You might, like I got East Indian on my arm. Um, my dad's mother is East Indian in Jamaica. So I was going through it like, damn, if I, am I fucking heathen? Like, you're gonna go through that. But you gotta constantly endure. That's the whole purpose of us being in this truth, is to endure. This en endurance is what, is what molds you, man, into a man, into an Israelite. But you have to go through the hardships. You have to go through them sleepless nights. You have to go through those arguments in the highways and the byways. You gotta go through your people casting you out. You gotta go through breaking the law and then like, damn, I fucked up. Oh my God, I'm about to die. You know, you gotta go through that shit. So no man can boast. Man. It said, my bad, go ahead. Uh, well, what I was saying was like, you know, the most high, ultimately, all of the things that happen is because no man can boast, man. All of our righteousness is filthy rags. And we are dependent upon Yahweh Shah and his righteousness and what he did, that sacrifice. And the only way the most high see, will see us and recognize us and uh, give us salvation is if we've been chosen from the beginning of time, uh, before time, to be uh, uh, the elect under Yahweh Shah, which means that you're gonna receive this truth. Now, if you endure, you're gonna see salvation. If you fall out, it's gonna be worse than if you never knew the truth before. But the whole point of it is to come back into your nationality and to endure, man. It's not meant to be easy, man. But whenever you go through some shit and you get on the other side of it, it make you better. Because it's like, man, I could do it again if I had to. I wouldn't want to. But if I had to, I'm more prepared mentally for it. The Most High is spiritually preparing us to be rulers, man. He's spiritually preparing us to be judges. To sit in the judgment seat, man. We have the honor of pushing out righteousness all across the world. And our, our covenant is going to be that we keep righteousness perfectly. That means everything we rehearsing right now... You you, you know, when you are uh, playing basketball, you're trying to work on your left hand, you're trying to work on your three-pointer. The Most High is going to give us that perfectly, man. We're going to be able to do this perfectly, but right now we're at practice. So you're going to fuck up. You're going you're gonna to miss that, that left hand layup. You're going to get frustrated to the point of, man, am I even meant for this? Because well, it's tough. Ankles, bro, man. Come on, you want to sit on that? Hey, you, your nigga going to bust your ass on that court, and then when you get your ass bust, you know, like, you know what, I need to go practice more because I ain't trying to, I ain't trying to have that again. It's the same thing. Con. Really, going back to what we was talking about earlier about Yasser Allah Rubin, we had to go through slavery so that we, so, okay, so the Most High, he has the left hand and the right hand. The right hand is the righteous side, the left hand is the wicked side. The Most High knows righteousness and wicked. He created both of them. So in order for us, the reason that we're going to be higher than the angels, so to speak, the angels only know righteousness if they're right hand angel. If they're left hand angel, they only know wickedness. We, on the other hand, have lived through the wickedness. We broke the law, statutes, and commandments. We disobeyed the Most High, going all the way back to Adam. Now, we learn the righteousness through Yahweh Shah. Well, we keep the laws. We learn how to be right. So, in essence, we're going to be the most like the Most High. Because we understand wickedness and righteousness, we live through both of them. But, uh, um, Sirach, 
Where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Oh, Sirach chapter, going back to being a babe. Sirach chapter 4, verse 17. For at the first will she walk with, with him by the wicked ways, she being wisdom. By the crooked ways. The crooked ways being when you first come in the truth and you're not going straight, you're going like this because you're trying to keep the law. You break one of the laws, then you go back straight. You know what I mean? You're trying to keep the laws, but you fuck up. You fuck up on some of your understanding because you obey. That's the crooked way. That's when she, being wisdom, is going to walk with you. And bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline. You go off because then you begin to fear the most high. Once you break that law, you're like, damn, the most high going to kill me. That's the, mo that's the most high still in that fear in you. You're not going to get killed, but you're becoming fearful of the most high to, want, to not want to break the laws or go off from um, what you're supposed to be doing according to the scriptures. That's the fear being installed to you. That's wisdom putting fear into you. Because if you didn't have fear, then you would just break the laws and not give a fuck like most people do. It says, and I'll uh, bring fear and dread upon him and torment him with her discipline. Torment her with the discipline, going, to, going back to you break the laws and you being tormented. Like, damn, I fucked up. I'm about, I'm gonna fall out the truth. I'm gonna die. Da, 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 da. That's the torment. Until she, until she may trust his, his soul and try him by her laws. Then will she return the straight way unto him and comfort him and show him her secrets. Then after she torment you and you, you build that fear up, then you start to get it more perfect. But she has to torment you and try you. Wisdom meaning she, meaning wisdom. She has to torment you and try you to see if you're right to be able to hold her secrets and wisdom. It says, uh, but if he go wrong, she will forsake him and give him over to his own ruin. And if you really go off, then you get the, you get turned to your own ruin. You fall out and whatever is going to happen to you is going to happen to you. Going back to Sirach chapter uh, 2 verse 3. Or 2. Part, part of 2. And constantly endure and make not haste in the time of trouble. The key word is constantly endure. That's the thing. Like it says uh, endure like a good soldier in your house shot. You have to endure. You have to be able to continue. Some brothers come in and they come in strong as hell. They be on fire, boy. They be out here every day. But can you endure? Can you go on for years and years? That's the question you gotta ask yourself. Is this the is this the final thing for you? All right, can you can you do this until the missiles come? If the missiles don't come, will you still continue? Cause some brothers think it's all about when the missiles come, when this place get destroyed. What about if this place don't get destroyed in our lifetime? We hope it get destroyed today or tomorrow or the next day or whatever. But what if it don't? What if it's three more generations before the destruction comes? Can you endure your whole life or are you going to get weak and fail out because the destruction didn't come when, it, when you thought it would come? That's why it says constantly endure. Remember, the disciples and all the people in Israel that was listening to Yahweh Shah thought the kingdom was going to come instantly. And then what happened? Yahweh Shah died, went on the cross and died. It was risen. And what? A lot of them fell out. Here we are, what, 2,000 years later, still waiting on the, uh, the destruction and the salvation of Yasharala. So the question is, can you endure? It says, and make not haste in time of trouble. Cleave unto him and depart not away, that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Once again, it's, we got to keep stopping because this is a deep, these are, it's deep. It says, make not haste in the time of trouble. And cleave unto him. Meaning that any time you go through anything, whatever it is, you about to get arrested. You see the nuclear missiles coming down out the sky. You about to get into an accident. You got debt problems, you're getting into money trouble. Anything. You're always supposed to cleave to the most high and call on him for anything, whether it's, whether it's regarding women, money, clothes, whatever. Whether it be high or low, you got to cleave to the most high in everything. It says, 
What's up is Brother Pundy, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. All right, once again. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. You want to break it down? Con. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Whatever, whatever goes on, the, the, the affliction, the trials and tribulations you go through, take it cheerfully. Because when our Lord was here, he didn't have an easy, comfortable life, man. And if you're going through a lot of fire and affliction, it's easy to, it's simple to say that Lord willing, you're part of the elect. Because at the end of the day, Yahweh Shah came in, he suffered, man. And for us to be his servants, we have to suffer as well. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 29. For unto you is given, for unto you it is given in the behalf of Yahweh Shah, not only to believe on him, but also to, to suffer for his sake. We have to suffer for his sake. That means we can't indulge in everything that the world is indulging in because we, we're, we've been spiritually cleansed to know that it's not wise and it's, 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 it's iniquity. Like uh, the, the um, adultery that's being pushed out, if the, man, if the woman has a, a man, you're not supposed to deal with that. That's unrighteous. But before you got into this truth, you didn't know, you didn't know that. You didn't understand that as a law. But according to the scriptures, man, if that woman has a man, you're not supposed to deal with her. Because you wouldn't want your brother to do that to you. As a family, we're all brothers. You wouldn't want your brother to do that to you, man, so you're not supposed to do that. And right now, that's being glorified. So we're suffering, calling shit what it is. Like, if it's, if it's wicked, you got to say that, man. You got to stand for something. And the problem is that the most high, didn't, uh, we lost our heritage, so we didn't stand for anything. Now we're getting our heritage back and it's your responsibility, it's your obligation as a man of your nation to stand up for what, what was given to you. Our Father's given us our inheritance back. That means we know what's real and what's not. Now in the world you said that, that's, that right there, that's real, that's real. That right there, that's flawed. Well the Most High has reals and, real things and flawed things. Sleeping with your brother's uh, woman is flawed. It's uh, Matthew chapter 7, verse 12. That for all things whatsoever ye would, ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Con. So the law was based on treating your, uh, your neighbor, which is the man of your nation, like you wanted to be treated. Love your neighbor like you love yourself. If I love my brother, I'm not going to do no pain to him by going behind his back and, 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 and secretly dealing with his woman. That's wickedness. It's not, it's not productive for us as a nation of people, man, to, to operate in that, in that, that mindset. Selling, selling all kind of drugs and narcotics to our people so they can escape the hell that we live in is not productive to our people because they're not in the right mind state. We have to be, you, you, the Most High gave us wine, he gave us uh, liquor, which is strong drink. He gave us certain things that we could calm our, our, our mold and, and, and get and, and chill for a second. But everything else outside of that, the Most High, is, is not of the Most High, man. We deal with herbs, but we don't smoke. You're not supposed to be smoking weed, man. You're defiling your temple. Weed is a herb, if it's grown out of the earth with seeds and it's natural, it's, it's actually beneficial to you. But you ruin that when you smoke it. The Most High made herbs for our benefit, but this is this is a part of things being turned upside down. Yeah, that's true. Come on, bring it out. Leviticus uh, chapter 19, verse 1. Wait, just bring it out. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to all the congregation of the children of Israel, Yasharallah, and said to them, Ye shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Verse 15. Ye shall do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the persons of the poor, nor labor the persons, I'm sorry, nor honor the person of the mighty. But in righteousness thou shalt judge thy neighbor. Thou shalt not go up and down as a talebearer among thy people, neither shalt thou stand against the blood of thy neighbor, I am the Lord. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any ways rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer sin upon him. Con, that means if your brother going off, you're supposed to be like, look, bro, that, that, that's going off, bro. You 
you're not supposed to be doing that. Because if you love him, if you love yourself, and you wouldn't want yourself to be in that. And if you were doing that, you would want somebody to say, look, bro, you're going off. Oh, for real, bro, I didn't even know, man. Thank you for that. We are a nation of people, man. We got to start protecting our own, man. The most high giving us these laws is, is wisdom. This is how we were uh, regarded as wise. This is the only thing that makes us special is the most high's laws, man. The, the fact that he chose our people to judge the world in righteousness under these laws. But we can't judge the world with these laws if we can't live by ourselves. That makes us hypocrites. The most high ain't raising up hypocrites. And you're not gonna you're not gonna keep the law perfect. Not in this life, not in this covenant. You're not gonna keep it perfect. But our job is to try. Every day when you walk it through life, it's like uh go ahead, go ahead.